Easter is a big thing for the Norwegians. In Easter, we eat tons of oranges, a lot of sweets. But what we most of all do, we go to our cabins in the mountains with our families. We go cross-country skiing. But a big thing is also eating the Easter lamb. And the Easter lamb is not a Norwegian tradition. It's actually going way back to the time in Egypt. It's actually the first lamb the Jews ate before Easter. The lamb I've got here today is a big, big lamb because this leg here is about five kilos. To make sure that we have an even temperature on the whole lamb, we tie it up with a string. Then I use a string you can buy in any shop. And you're probably wondering, yeah, he's doing something fancy with a string now. So what I'm doing, I'm making like a, a ring like that and I'm putting the ring through here. If you think that looks a little difficult, you can cut these in small pieces and just tie one and one. I go around, I turn it around, and I make sure that all this becomes a part of the rest. So I pull it. Normally, I put a lot of salt on it. The thing is, you can either just salt and put salt and pepper, put it in the oven, or you can make sure that the meat becomes even more red and becomes like salted lamb. So what I do, I actually add a lot of salt, really bunches. So now I'm getting a salted leg of lamb, like that. I want some rosemary. Rosemary and lamb is a classic. It's a great smell here. So then I put that one in here. Then I want garlic. Oh, pop around. And we have the flavors of orange. And when I'm grating it, and I, I'm actually only using the outer skin here. You see, I'm not touching the white part because when it comes white, it becomes bitter. Crush this one a little. Then, fennel seeds. Black pepper. Onion, powdered onion. There. Crushing all this together. Oh, look at this. I don't know if you can actually see it. I just want to put a little dash of olive oil in it, just so it, it sticks together. I would actually put salt in it, but now since we have salted it, I'm not using that. So now I put rub on, look here. Look at that. That is just great. So just make sure that you have this rub on the under and on the sides, on the top, everywhere, because all these flavors has to go into the meat. So I put that one on a tray, cut, cut it in four. It's gonna be in, in for many hours. So the onion is going to be soft and sweet. Give a lot of flavor to the stock. Like that. Some water. So a little bit of thyme. Ah, great. Perfect. Look at that. That's going to be great. I put it in the oven. 130 degrees. This leg here about three hours. But I want you to actually, because ovens are different, I want you to check at home every hour just to see where it is. So I put it on here. Let's enter. Okay. Great. Now it's in here. This is an industrial oven, but at home it's less efficient, so it might take longer time. Uh, but the temperature you want is around, depending if you want medium, medium well, well done. I don't recommend that. But 
around 60, 62, some says 65, around there it should be. And when the temperature is really low, it's much more controlled. If you have 180 degrees, 200 degrees, 220 degrees, it goes really fast. But that can go fast from when you say it's perfectly done until well done really, really fast. So 130 degrees, you have a lot of control. We're going to have these potatoes as they are. Cut them in. But the same thickness, like that. And then I put them in the pan. I pour in with chicken stock. So about one third of chicken stock. Two thirds of butter. I need a large spoon of butter because I'm going to use a lot. And if it looks unhealthy, yes it is. Now, it, there is a lot of fat here, but it's going to give enormous flavor. Look at that. So I take the whole garlic like this and just cut it in two. And I put that one in. And then I'm a big fan of thyme. A nice bunch of thyme there. Salt. So I put this on seven, I have nine here, so I put it on seven. So what's actually gonna happen now is the chicken stock is gonna go into the potato and when there's no more chicken stock, you're left with the fat. And what happens then? It actually starts to fry. So it's cooking and frying in the same pan. And then when you eat the potato, it's not just like a cooked potato or fried potato, it's actually filled with the flavors of the garlic, the thyme and the chicken stock. It's very, explosions of flavor here. So now it's gonna cook there. In the meanwhile, we'll make the sauce. I put some sunflower oil in, and then I want a shallot. As you can see, when I'm cutting the onion, I'm holding my hands like this. It's so I don't cut myself. Put this into my casserole here. Then, a little thyme and some trimmings of lamb. Now I want the shallots to become a little golden brown. So I'm not using too high temperature. I don't want them to burn themselves. Then I have the trimmings of lamb here. I add some flour. This will give a little thickness to my sauce. Put those in the casserole. If you don't have lamb stock, you can use beef stock. And I recommend in the shops in Norway, you can actually buy these stocks in small two deciliter containers. Because we're making a port wine sauce. Port wine and seps. And these are gonna soak up all the port wine and give a lot of flavor to my sauce. Now it's really starting to become nice and brown here. I add my port wine. Then I add some stock. I turn down the temperature. I just want it to simmer. So now my sauce is gently simmering. My potatoes are also. So now we can start with uh, the vegetables. Use vegetables you like, you know, anything of season. We have this, what we call Romanesco in Norway. It's between cauliflower and broccoli. Tastes really good. And I cut it like this. And things have to look delicate. There. Some carrots. I got some small carrots here, some baby carrots. If you use la larger ones, cut them in smaller pieces. But now in, in this period of time, you can get large ones and small ones, like that. 
This one I cut in the same, same shape. Do something like that. It's the same size, so they have the even cooking. There we are. Some Brussels sprouts. I just love Brussels sprouts. And this is the way Norwegian chefs like their vegetables. And then I want some turnip. I just love turnips. Like that. Taking off the peel. Great. Then I cut these in like two small boats like that. Great. Perfect. Now the potatoes are done. If you have a look here, you, have seen, you see that all the chicken stock has gone into the potatoes and we're left with the fat. And the fat has incorporated all the flavors of the garlic and the thyme. And this is just a bombshell of, of flavors. The sauce, we're going to add some more of the, uh, the lamb stock from there. But now we have to s start cooking the vegetables. I'll put them into boiling water. There. I turn down the potatoes. Those, those are done. Oh, look at that. Now that's what I call a roast. A lamb leg roast. A feast. Wow, look at that. So what we want the meat to do, always when we have cooked the meat, we want it to rest. And this is because we don't want all the juices when we start cutting onto it to go onto the cutting board. So we let this one rest, but I'm going to need that juice, that lamb juice there to have in my sauce. So then I pour it over in here so I can mix the two together. So now I have to drain the sauce because here you have a lot of trimmings, you have the herbs. So I take out the largest bones. I don't need those. Okay. Then I pour it into a new casserole. Oh, it just, it smells of sap. So now I just reduce the sauce until serving, and then I flavor it. So let's start cutting the meat in the meanwhile. This is always like, there's a big tension when you start cutting meat like this. Wow, look at that. So we take off the strings, and it just smells so then we start cutting. Let's have a look. Wow. This one looks... So... It's so tender. So, great. Lamb cooking for three hours with a nice glaze. You can feel the orange, some nice vegetables, a boiled and fried potato with taste of garlic and thyme. So I hope you enjoy Easter, have a lovely time with the family, and I'll see you soon.